Hello, my name is Rick Sasso. Welcome to the Cervical Spine Research Society Surgical Videos section. And we're going to talk about and show and demonstrate anterior odontoid screw fixation. Before we start, though, I'd like to talk a little bit about the controversies. We're going to show you one way of doing anterior odontoid screw fixation, and that's with a lag technique, with a fully threaded screw setting up the C2 body and odontoid in a lag situation so that we over drill the body part tap the odontoid fractured piece, and then as we place our screw, our fully threaded screw will slide through the body, uh, our gliding hole, and then engage the odontoid tip, and then pull the odontoid tip into the C C2 body to get a lag effect. This is different than a partially threaded screw, which um, may, be, may be used. The problem with partially threaded screws, though, is if you have a very high odontoid fracture, that thread needs to be completely within the odontoid piece and not across the fracture site. So the problem is if you have a high fracture, you may need to cut the screw, which I've had to do in the past, and that's why I don't use partially threaded screws anymore. Also, some may use uh, K-wires and, 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 and use a cannulated screw. I think that that is an incredibly dangerous thing to do. The uh, drill, uh, once the K-wire is uh, placed, can bind the K-wire and either shear the K-wire off, which I've seen before, or even worse, bind the K-wire and drive the K-wire into the frame and magnum and into the brainstem, which I've seen cases uh, as well. So uh, I don't like to use a cannulated technique. So you're gonna see a um, fully threaded, non-cannulated screw technique, which in my opinion is the best way to, to do this operation. Um, I, I hope you learned something. Um, and I look forward to seeing you later. Thank you. Good afternoon, my name is Dan Robinson. I'm one of the current spine fellows here at Indiana Spine uh, Group here in Indianapolis and Carmel, Indiana. Uh, today we are going to be talking about odontoid screw uh, fixation through the anterior approach for a type 2 odontoid fracture of appropriate morphology. Here we have the specimen and we're going to be showing the setup, the instrumentation, and placement of a fully threaded screw lagging by uh, technique. So here we have the patient in the supine position. The most important part about uh, placement of an odontoid screw is the positioning and the uh, ability to obtain appropriate imaging. Without that, it, this is not a safe procedure, so a lot of time goes into uh, positioning the patient, getting appropriate x-rays, both a perfect AP and lateral, and using uh, biplane or fluoroscopy uh, so that you do not have to switch between uh, the shots as you are, are putting in your screw. So as you can see here, we have a uh, specimen in the supine position. Cranially is at the top of the screen, chest is at the bottom of the screen, and we have our AP and lateral x-rays. We have biplanar fluoroscopy uh, with the mouth opened uh, using bite blocks uh, so that we can see an appropriate uh, odontoid. We're going to start off showing that AP uh, x-ray here. Perfect. So we just took a shot of the AP. You can see we have good visualization of an open mouth odontoid shot with uh, after we adjusted for the perfect rotation, you can see the lateral masses of C1 uh, perfectly spaced evenly, and you can see the tip of the odontoid uh, for that view. After taking that AP, we are going to go to a lateral x-ray that will get a perfect lateral uh, image of C2, and also be using an instrument external to the patient to ensure that we can get correct trajectory. I'm going to be holding an instrument showing the trajectory. So this is, uh, my hand completely resting on the patient's chest, which is the typical trajectory, just knowing that we can uh, get a screw in at this angle appropriately, uh, right beneath uh, the lip of C2. And now that we have all of this done, we can start our procedure. So we begin with a standard uh, Smith-Robinson approach to the anterior cervical spine. The sternum, top of sternum is right here at, the, uh, at my fingertip. Um, so it's pretty low uh, at the C6 to C7 uh, level where we come in be, to be able to drop our hand to that appropriate trajectory. So after appropriate dissection down to the cervical spine, we can localize the uh, tip of C2 using a blunt instrument and ensure that we are able to get high enough along with our trajectory with our hand across the base. And you can see that we're getting right to the base of C2. Um, we have cleared that off with uh, bipolar cautery under direct visualization and actually removed a small portion of the anterior annulus of the C2 to 3 uh, disc because the appropriate starting point is in that good cortical bone uh, just behind that lip of the anterior portion of C2. If you start on the front of C2 or if there's something pushing you more uh, ventral to that lip, you're going to 
uh, skive off the front of the C2 or have it too anterior of a screw trajectory uh, aiming posterior and coming out the back of the dens. So that appropriate starting point really is right behind uh, that lip of C2 on the uh, inferior uh, surface. Different retractors can be used, whether it's a uh, uh, radiolucent uh, retractor, just standard uh, ACDF type uh, retractor. In our video, we're going to be using a tube on a flex arm, just so we will not require the help of an assistant. We will be placing that tube uh, right down to the C23 disc, attaching that flex arm. For this system, we are going to be using a 4.0 screw, uh, fully threaded, that is uh, lagging uh, by technique. So we're going to completely drill uh, across to, into the dens with a 3.0 drill, drill the near side of the fracture with a 4.0 drill, and then tap with a 4.0 tap uh, all the way to the tip of the dens with an appropriately positioned screw so that we are uh, lagging that fracture fragment. The original systems did use a cannulated uh, K-wired uh, system. The problem uh, with that is that the K-wire is quite flexible, so if you, once you get it into the uh, cortical bone of C2, it's very difficult to uh, reposition your hand if you need to change trajectory, whereas the uh, non-cannulated uh, 3.0 drill or whatever your first drill is, is much more rigid and allows you to change your trajectory and reposition as necessary. The K-wire also is very flexible and can get bound up in a cannulated system and actually be advanced uh, inadvertently if it, you're slightly off plane with your drill um, which obviously can lead to uh, some serious complications if it's advanced through the back of the dens. So here we are going to start with our 3.0 drill. This is our first drill. So this is our starting point. You can see uh, I took a bipolar into the anterior annulus of C2300 direct visualization, took a kerosene to take a bite out of that anterior annulus, and I'm starting right under that lip of C2 into that good cortical bone. This is with my hand completely dropped for that appropriate trajectory with a soft tissue protector on the 3.0 screw. And so we're going to start off by drilling in that anterior portion of C2 and advancing that drill full speed. So here I'm advancing my 3.0 drill bit on the lateral um, x-ray as you can see. We are making sure that we are perfectly uh, coming up into the tip of the dens. We're going to check an AP now to make sure that we are again pointed right at that uh, tip of the dens. We're going to continue advancing that full speed. Shot there. Shot there. Let's show the lateral again as we're advancing really up to the tip of the dens. So again, this is our uh, smaller diameter drill that we are advancing the complete path. Okay, here is our lateral. And we're happy with where that is angled at the point, tip of the dens. So then we're gonna finish this on the AP view. So I'm really getting into that hard cortical bone uh, of the dens at the very tip. So that will come out. We're going to switch to the lateral X right now. We're now switching to our 4.0 drill bit where we're going to drill the near side of uh, C2 all the way up to the fracture so that our uh, fully threaded screw will slide through that portion um, before engaging the far side. So this is the 4.0 drill bit being advanced uh, forward. And we're going to advance that drill bit on the lateral just up to the uh, fracture site but not past it. Shot there. Okay. All right, that will come out. I will use a K-wire in this uh, system to measure our screw depth, uh, although, as mentioned, we are not going to use a cannulate system for uh, placement of the screw, so we do not inadvertently advance that K-wire. So we're just measuring our screw length based on the uh, K-wire. It's going to be a 42 screw. And then we will be advancing the 4.0 tap across the fracture site into the hard cortical bone of the, the den so that we get appropriate screw purchase on the uh, distal uh, fracture fragment. So the 4.0 tap should slide right through that overdrilled section. So it slides right up to that overdrilled section. And then we're going to tap the uh, distal segment, as mentioned, of the fracture fragment so that we're not pushing it away as that uh, fully threaded screw begins to engage. And as we get up to the very far cortical surface of the uh, dens, we can feel that tap begin to engage the cortical bone. And we'll take the fully threaded screw, the 4040. And again, just like that tap, it should uh, slide nicely through that overdrilled portion uh, so that we get the lag and compression once it begins to engage on the uh, distal fragment. So now the threads are beginning to engage into our fracture fragment. 
uh, where we attach the 4 screw. And you can see how that screw head is sitting nicely right into that anterior lip of C2, uh, into that good cortical bone. And as the screw is uh, now engaging that cortical bone, the uh, distal fragment is being engaged in compressing uh, that the tip of the dens uh, back into the C2 body uh, where the threads are not engaging. So here you can see the AP and lateral of our uh, odontoid screw, fully threaded and lagging by uh, technique. Uh, this video really highlights the importance of uh, excellent imaging to have a safe procedure where you can appropriately get a start point, uh, advance your screw across the fracture fragment itself. Hopefully you enjoyed that and learned something. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Cervical Spine Research Society Surgical Techniques video channel. Uh, hopefully you will subscribe to, to, our, to our channel um, and I hope to see you in future Surgical Techniques videos. Thank you so much. Goodbye.